Okay, uh, hi, my name is Lena Kretzow, this is my colleague Daniel Kulisch, and um, we'd like to talk about um, tutorials for developers. There are plenty of software tools in this world. Um, for example, we have general purpose tools that everyone uses, and um, they are often quite easy to understand. And on the other hand, we have expert tools, and those Expert tools are most of the time not really self-explanatory, so it's hard to know how to use them. And a subgroup of these expert tools is other tools that uh, developers use in many cases. So I, as a developer, uh, work with my tools, and sometimes I have to get to know a new tool. And um, time is money, so I don't want to waste my time but I want to learn how to work with that tool really quickly and as fast as possible because, well, I don't want to waste my time. So the question is, how can I achieve that? And one way for um, learning how to use a tool are, for example, tutorials. And in the past, there were lots of text tutorials, the classical manual with screenshots explaining how to use the tool. And um, in the last years, video tutorials got quite common. For example, on YouTube, um, you have a tutorial about really everything, about most functions in programs that are somehow hard to understand. So, there are many ways of tutorials. And the question that we asked was, what is the best way for developers to learn new software tools? Um, I just want to give a quick overview of our, uh, over our research questions, how our experiment looked like, and um, of course, what results we could see. Mm. So we had three questions. The first one, I will come back to that in detail later, was what kind of tutorials the developers prefer, if they have the choice. The second one was which tutorial takes less time. And the third one was which tutorial is more effective for the developers. Our participants were 42 undergraduate students at our university. Um, they were from different um, computer science courses, but they all attended one lecture. And then they were all about 20 years old, and none of them were female, and three were male. And then um, they could choose between five different experiments. So they were voluntarily taking part in our experiment. We did not really force them, but they could choose where they wanted to participate. Now we'll go on with the tool that we used as a, as a tool in our experiment, and this will be explained by Daniel. Yeah, thanks and hi. So, uh, the tool that we used here for the study was the spreadsheet inspection framework. And the spreadsheet inspection framework actually is a tool for um, yeah, inspecting um, and uh, analyzing spreadsheets. So, if you, uh, as probably most of you know, spreadsheets also are programs. They are not documents, like Word documents, but they are really programs. And um, if you have some mission-critical spreadsheet and you don't want uh, to be in, uh, to end up in the history of those many people who have lost so many millions by relying on an unreliable spreadsheet, you can use the spreadsheet inspection framework to run various uh, static analysis uh, methods on your spreadsheet to find potential faults. Yeah, we can deal with uh, false positives, and uh, it also has two, let's say, dynamic testing techniques you can do. So you can do a sort of uh, unit testing for spreadsheets, and you can also uh, do some advanced uh, data validation. Now, the tool is not self-explanatory, it's one of this group of the expert tools. So um, if you see the tool for the first time, you probably won't know how to use it, you don't know what it's for, yeah? 
and that's why you probably need the tutorial. Um, it's not so difficult to get, so basically you have this sidebar that we added to, uh, sorry, this, this ribbon that we added to Excel, which is the control center where you can configure the inspections and so on. You have a sidebar where uh, violations are reported, and you have those markers which show up in your actual spreadsheet which uh, indicate these findings that are correspond to the sidebar and they are synchronized. Yeah, so how, how did we um, yeah, design the study to um, see how the tutorials perform here actually? So basically we first had a pre-test uh, which was just a questionnaire so uh, all participants who stated interest in our study had to fill it out and then um, they got an introduction video, it was about 10 minutes long. Um, it, yeah, it was a video where actually I explained yeah, what spreadsheets are, why they are so cool and flexible, um, and also what risks uh, spreadsheet use can have. And then we randomized uh, those participants in six groups. So, here, the first group, they got a text tutorial. You know, text tutorial, it's dead text, yeah, so they have to read some dead text. Um, and the same for the video group, they got a video which they had to watch and to make things more live. Um, they didn't just consume the tutorial and then go on, but they had to practice. So, they got this tutorial and then they did some exercises so we also could see if they understood it. Um, and yeah, we had a group which had only a text tutorial, only the video tutorial, and a group which had both. And apart from this, say, basic tutorial, which only covered some of the techniques, the more easy ones in the spreadsheet inspection framework, we also had this group with the advanced tutorial, where they uh, got to learn the unit testing technique. Um, and also here, we had these two three groups, and this part, uh, they didn't have the advanced uh, tutorial. And then after the tutorial stuff, uh, they proceeded with a main task, where they had to do some spreadsheet maintenance, uh, not very easy. And finally, uh, there was a survey where we asked them more questions. Yeah, and now uh, Verena will continue and tell you how we did the analysis. to the results. Again, research question one. What kind of tutorials do developers prefer if they can decide? And the uh, matching hypothesis was that um, the video tutorial is chosen more or less often than the text if the participants have the choice. And um, the results were quite surprising for us because um, there was actually no significant difference in the preference. So what we can see is that some of the participants um, stated that they equally used both, so they did not prefer any of it. And the others either used only the video or nearly only the video, and the others used only or nearly only the text. 
So what we could see from this result is that there was a really a personal preference if I want to use more the text or if I prefer the video. And there was no clear sign that most of the participants would prefer one or the other. So um, the result for this for us was that it's really a personal thing if I like videos or text better. The next question was um, about the time, which tutorial takes less time. And um, in this case we had two hypotheses. The first is that there is a difference in time if I only look at the tutorial. And the second was that there is a difference in time if I look at the tutorial and the following task. And um, the results show that first, if I only look at the tutorial, in our case the text tutorial was significantly faster. Um, on the left side we see the easy tutorial, and on the right side it was the advanced, more difficult tutorial. And in both cases the text tutorial was the fastest, which makes sense because the video has always a fixed length. And, um, our participants did not skip anything, so if they watched the video, they watched the complete video. And for the text, it's easier to skip pages or look at the pictures or just go through the text faster than, um, than through the video. So the text <coughs> was really faster. Yeah. So did you try to make it so under some circumstances uh, of approximately the same length? So how, you know, what's, what's the value of this number um, if there's one page of tutorial and, and an hour of video? No, no um, what we did, we um, tried to make the tutorials as content alike as possible. So we had the explanations that we gave in the video and we included these explanations in the text, also about the same length, but I would say that reading or speaking takes a little bit longer than reading, so that's one advantage in this case of the text. But when we looked at the um, tutorial and the following task, suddenly there were no differences anymore. So um, for some reason, the text tutorial group was slower in the task, or the video tutorial group was faster. And um, we are not entirely sure why this is the case, but we can imagine that maybe the text people skipped things, and then they had to go back and look things up, and those who took the time to watch the whole video just watched everything without missing any information. So, interestingly, if I have to, um, well, you have to keep in mind that I never only have the tutorial, but I always somehow use the software afterwards. And it's interesting to see that in this case, the differences somehow um, disappear. Um, actually, it looks like there is a uh, somehow difference, but we ran the statistical tests and there was no actual difference. But as um, we are here now in a higher um, time frame, it's, yeah, it looks more than it is actually in numbers. <coughs> then for our last and the biggest research question about the effectiveness, we had four hypotheses. The first two were about um, if there is a difference in how much I look up in text or video tutorials. And the second about the understanding, if there is a difference in understanding if I watch or read the tutorial for the first time. And about the preference, this um, is the uh, verdict of the participants who had both tutorials, so they could choose. And as you can see, in a light gray, the video group well, they did not look up that many things. Most stated that they didn't use it at all. And for the text, it's more in the one or two to three times. So um, we could see that, well, there was a preference in this case for text to look things up, which is explainable because well, <coughs> I think it's easier to take a text and search for a certain information. And in a video, it's harder to, if I have a video with 10 minutes and I want to search for that special point where I have to click then it's hard to, to find that section in the video. So at least in our case um, it was easier in the text and therefore clearly prefer the preferred way to look things up. 
Um, as I said before, we wanted to make our tutorials as content alike as possible because we wanted to uh, compare the presentation form and not bias it with uh, different uh, explanations in the tutorials. So um, we could confirm that we, was, we were successful in this case because, as you can see, um, most participants understood about 90%, or well, at least they said that they, that they understood about 90% in average. And um, this shows that the presentation form isn't really that important. It's more important what the content explains, and um, if the content is similar, the presentation form doesn't make a difference. Um, the last two hypotheses were um, if about the uh, number of wrong or correct answers given after the tutorials, if there is a difference, and if there is a difference in the perceived difficulty of the whole <coughs> experiments. Because as we explained before, we had the one group that had only the easy part and the one group who had the more advanced techniques and perhaps there's a difference in how easy or difficult the participants would perceive the whole thing. Um, for the amount of errors, we could see that um, most participants did not do anything wrong in the tasks after the tutorial. So again, a content-alike tutorial also produced content-alike um, results. Again, the presentation form did not really uh, improve or uh, yeah, make a difference in the results in this case. And also in the perceived difficulty, we could not see any significant differences. It's a little bit hard to see with the uh, different shades of gray. But, uh, um, Believe me when I say that there are no significant differences. We tested um, between the different groups, well, text group with only the simple task, text group with the advanced tasks, and um, all kinds of combinations, and we could not see any differences. So even though one group had to learn more and had to take in more information, they still did not think that it was not difficult. So again, we could not see that a video tutorial, for example, would be more or easier than, for example, the text tutorial. So, again, we could see that there is not the difference that we expected there to be. With these results, we are, well, not alone, but um, we are also not completely in the related work. As you can see, there are four groups of related work about text and video tutorials. Those um, who are pro video, pro text, those stating that both have advantages and those who could not see any uh, differences. I will not, will not go into detail, but um, there are a few differences between studies in the related work and our study. For example, one um, study who thought that videos would be better had a completely different group of participants. In this case, fifth and sixth graders, and we had students. So we think that the participants, or the choice of participants, makes a big difference in this case because school children maybe just have not that reading ability that students have. So maybe they really prefer videos because it's easier for them and for students there is not that difference anymore. Or in another example, maybe for statistics, when teaching statistics is just different than when teaching how to use the software. So uh, resulting, we really think that it's <coughs> highly dependent on who uses the tutorial and also what I'm teaching. So we can only say for our group, for our students and for this tool, we could not see that many differences. But depending on related work, there are other results for other participants or teaching other things that make a difference. So it's we cannot say that this topic is complete research. There is much more to do to find more similarities or differences. We had some threats to validity. Um, well, we are not professional tutorial creators, but we are well experienced teachers. So we did our best to teach 
and create the tutorials, but maybe a professional tutorial creator would do it a little bit more fancy. <laughs> um, we did not consider the learning style, but as we, um, well, I think it somehow shows reality because most tutorials are not matched to one special learning style, but they should somehow work for everyone, so we tried it as well. We had only 42 participants, but I think you all know that uh, it's quite time consuming to do studies, especially if one experiment takes about two hours just being present without preparation time and everything. Our tutorials are very content equivalent, which is good on one side because we could really see if the presentation form makes a difference. But of course, if I would create only a video tutorial, I might change some things to use the advantages that maybe a video could have or a text. But that's hard to do that if you want to uh, compare two types. And we only um, investigated the short time effects, which, mean, which means that we have no information about how it would look like if we had asked the participants to solve a task a few weeks later. But I think that's a different topic. We wanted to see how they react just at this moment. So summarizing, we could see that there was no clear favorite. We could see that the text was preferred to look things up. And we could see that there was no difference in understanding or the error quota. So if I were a tutorial creator, and if it was possible, I would provide both tutorial types. But creating tutorials is A, expensive, and B, uh, B, it costs a lot of time. So for the future work, we would suggest to evaluate which tutorial is used for which purpose in more detail. For example, to get a better feeling if, for looking things up, the text is always preferred, and if a video is preferred to get an overview, for example, of which one I use if I haven't worked with my tool for several weeks and I just want to get back into working with it, which one would I use then? Because perhaps then it's possible to provide tutorials more, well, purpose specific and not just one general big tutorial for everything. So, uh, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free. Thank you. 
at least from what we could see in our uh, test. So one, one mechanism that you might consider using to validate such a small sample yeah. is do the test again with the same sample size and see if you get a similar result. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not a perfect uh, solution, but it would be some way to, to, to validate your <coughs> that shows that a tutorial is better than no tutorial. 
and we think that it would have been really frustrating for the remaining group to work without knowing what is going on in the tool at all. And um, we really wanted to see the difference between the two tutorials and not what happened if there was no tutorial. Because I, I think if you don't have a no tutorial group, then you really can't see how good your tutorials are, right? Because now you just compare two tutorials, and well, they're the same, but you have no idea if they're any good, which I think is problematic. Yeah, but you know, there are always uh, products or tools that are really, you, you wouldn't expect anybody to, to use it right without getting a tutorial. It's, uh, if you, I don't know, think about operating a flight control tower, yeah, then you wouldn't have a group which has uh, no tutorial and expect that they could still operate correctly. So but, it, but it gives you a scale, right? Yeah. Of how, how good it is. I think we should say that flight control.